Hi, I'm Nikhil Dev, the instructor of this CKA certification series. In this series, you'll learn everything you need to know to how to pass the Certified Kubernetes Administrator exam. Here I'm designed 30 questions and answers for cracking the CKA exam. By the end of this series, you'll be able to pass CKA certification. The Certified Kubernetes Administrator Certification is a globally recognized certification program offered by the Cloud Native Computing Foundation. It is a performance-based exam that tests your knowledge of Kubernetes administration. This is the official website. As you see the cost of this exam is $395, but sometimes you will get offers. So you have to visit this website frequently for knowing the best offers. Who is it for? They are clearly mentioned here, this certification is for Kubernetes administrators, cloud administrators, and other IT professionals who manage Kubernetes instances. I'm also assuming you have already completed some Kubernetes fundamentals courses, or you have some experience in Kubernetes, because, in this series, I will not teach you any fundamentals. This is not designed for learning Kubernetes fundamentals. If you are looking for learning Kubernetes then I am highly recommending Certified Kubernetes Administrator by Mumshad Manambeth from Udemy, and also you can refer official documentation of Kubernetes. The CKA exam covers a wide range of topics, including storage, troubleshooting, cluster architecture, installation and configuration, networking, security, managing resources, and application deployment. You can see here the weightage of each and every domain. The exam is challenging, but it is not impossible to pass. Learning the basics of Kubernetes first. There are many resources available to help you do this. Once you have a basic understanding of Kubernetes, start practicing with the command line. You can use Killer Coda website for learning purposes. This is free for one hour. Go to Killer Coda website and choose your environment. If you want to play in Kubernetes environment then you can choose playgrounds then you will get one master and one worker node cluster for one hour. If you want a to practice CKA scenario then you have to choose CKA. I will show you both. First we can go to playgrounds and select Kubernetes version. We have one master and one worker node cluster for one hour. You can use this environment for your Kubernetes learning for one hour, if you are choosing the Udemy course of Mumshad Manambeth. It is coming with a free practice test. Once you are okay with the basics, then next choose CKA. Here you will get some scenarios basis environment, let's choose one. Click on Start. You can see a question in left side and the terminal in right side. The question is, there is a deployment in the management namespace, and we need to write the logs of all containers associated with this deployment to slash root slash logs dot log, let's try to fix. First of all, we need to know the deployments in the management namespace. We can see one deployment there. Deployment name is collect data. Next we need to find what are the containers that are running under the deployment. We can use the edit command for that. Here we can see the deployment configuration in a YAML file. We can see two containers in this deployment, one is engine X and another is HTTPD. Let's exit this, using Control plus C key. Let's find the logs of engine X container from collect data deployment.
we can see the logs of engine x container according to the question we have to write these logs to slash root slash logs dot log done next we need to do the same for the httpd container let's check the result yes it is right so like this you can attend all questions available in this portal after the basics of Kubernetes courses. If you are stuck, then we can use this tips and solution tabs for the help. Let's log out. Next about the exam. The exam is conducted online and consists of a set of practical tasks that must be completed within a specified time frame, typically two hours. It is a performance-based exam, meaning candidates are assessed based on their ability to perform real-world tasks using the command line interface in a live Kubernetes cluster. You will have up to 17 to 20 questions in the exam, and you need to get a 66% mark for passing the exam. Once you enrolled for the exam, then you will get an exam simulator with two practice exams with 25 questions. I recently completed CKA certification. In my experience if anyone spends two months for studying Kubernetes basics and one month for certification preparation, that is enough for clearing this certification. In this series I will teach you 30 question and answers. Without further ado let's kick start. The first question is to deploy a pod called Nginx pod, with the image Nginx in the control plan. Please note, it should be scheduled on the control plane instead of the node, and the weightage of this task is 3%. It is a very straightforward question. Let's go to KillerCoda.com. If you don't have any Kubernetes cluster for learning purposes, don't worry, we can use KillerCoda for one hour. Click on Playgrounds. Click on Kubernetes version 1.26. It will ask for authentication. Use one of the authentication method and log in to KillerCoda. Click on Start. OK. Your environment is up and running. First of all, we have set an alias for Kuba CTL. Then we can use just K button. Instead of typing Kuba CTL, this will save you time in your examination. Yes, it is working. Now we have a cluster with one master and one node. Let's increase the font size for better visibility. We can deploy a pod in Kubernetes in two ways. The first is the imperative way, in this way using commands for creating resources in the cluster. Second is the declarative approach, in a declarative approach, you describe the desired state of your cluster or resources using a YAML file. These manifests specify the configuration and properties of the desired resources, such as pods, deployments, services, etc. In the exam point of view, we need to know both ways. This is the imperative commands for running a pod in a cluster. Cube CTL run pod name, here nginx pod is the pod name, and image equals nginx that means an nginx container will be run inside the pod, dry run equals client oyaml means instead of running pod in cluster we are going to take that as a output to a file. Let's inspect the YAML file. This is the YAML file supposed to apply to the cluster if we are not using dry run. From the exam point of view instead of applying imperative commands directly to the cluster, we can consider saving configuration files with respective question numbers using dry run oyaml. It will help you in the exam. As you see, pod name is nginx and the container name is nginx. Okay, let's create a pod by using this yaml file.
For creating a pod from a YAML file we can use the command kubectl apply minus f file name. Ok, pod is created. Pod is running. But you can see this port is scheduled into the worker node. By default, Kubernetes will schedule a pod into a worker node, unless if you specify the node name. According to the question, it should be scheduled on the control panel. Ok, let's delete the pod. And I will show you how to schedule this pod on the control plane. Pod is deleted. Let's copy the control plane name. Let's edit the YAML file. In order to schedule the pod in a specific node, we need to define the node name under spec section. Let's apply the YAML file again. Now you can see the pod is scheduled on the master node. Ok the first question is completed, now we can go to the next question. The second question is to expose an existing pod called nginx pod as a service, and the service name should be nginx service, and the pod port is 80, the task weightage is 4%, let's crack the second question. We have created a pod for first question, that we can consider as an existing pod for this question. We have to expose this port as a service. In order to expose a pod we can use this command. kubectl expose pod and pod name as engine x pod. Name means the service name, here service name is engine x svc. It's important to note that the port flag in this context refers to the container port within the pod, not the port on the host machine. Let's check the service. You can see the pod is exposed through a cluster IP. Let's confirm whether the services is exposed the pod or not. We can use the curl command for accessing the service. Yes it is working. Ok. Let's go to the next question. The third question is to expose the existing pod called engine x pod as a node port service. This service should access through the node port. The port number is 30200. The weightage of this question is 6%. Ah, it is a little bit tricky question. Let's crack this question. You can see engine x pod is running. We have to expose this pod through node port. Let's expose it through node port. The command is kubectl expose pod and the service name is engine x node port svc and the service type is node port. It's important to note that the port flag in this context refers to the container port within the pod, not the port on the host machine. Ok, service is created. Let's check the service. Ok, you can see the service is exposed to a random port. According to the question, it should be exposed through port 30200. In order to do that, we need to edit the service. The command is kubectl edit service service name. Here you can see service is running in for 31249. Just edit. And then replace it with 30200. Let's save and exit.
it will automatically redeploy. You can see now the service is exposed through port 30200. Okay, let's try to access the service. In order to access we need to find node IP first. Okay, you can see node 1 IP address is 172.30.2.2, just copy and curl that IP with port number as 30200. As expected this service is exposed through node port. Thank you for watching this video. In next video we will cover next three questions for CKA. If you felt this video is helpful for the certification, then please like and subscribe this channel.